Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Markula. A warm welcome to Amsterdam. Um, Mr. Markula said he raised the question about the uniqueness of Amsterdam and being a very chauvinistic mayor. I'd like to give uh, an answer. No, it's not an answer. It's uh, maybe the answer. Amsterdam, ladies and gentlemen, is a city of citizens. I think that is the answer. You will not find palaces or cathedrals here in this city since Amsterdam has never been a city of kings and bishops. But you will find 8,000 canal monuments, though. The canal houses that our ancestors built, who often combined tradesmanship with local politics or joined the citizen force. The Amsterdamers ruled themselves, ladies and gentlemen, and luckily they still do. I have some 800,000 colleagues or bosses. Being smart and diverse with a rich history and traditional values of equal democratic citizenship, that is what characterizes Amsterdam. But these are European characteristics as well. And that is why we say Amsterdam is a European city par excellence. We're glad that today European cities and European citizenship are on top of the agenda, not only here at the Westergasfabriek, but also in the National Maritime Museum, where the EU ministers responsible for urban matters have their informal meeting, where, as Mr. Markula said, the Pact of Amsterdam will be adopted. Ladies and gentlemen, the 21st century is, as they say, the century of the city. The past decades, many have tried to shift the attention in Brussels a bit from rural issues towards urban issues in European policy. And that is not a luxury, it's a necessity. According to Eurostat, 380 million Europeans live in urban areas. That is 75% of all the inhabitants of the European Union. And the Pact of Amsterdam is a step in placing citizens on the European agenda. It is in our cities where the urgent challenges of our time manifest itself most pressingly. Our citizens need better air quality and easy mobility. They want affordable housing, and in some cities, neighborhoods need a lot of improvement. Our citizens want us to counter radicalization and they need their local governments to cope with the influx of large numbers of refugees. These are the issues that we have to deal with every day. At the same time, it's often in the cities where innovative solutions are found. It's a population density in combination with a diverse population and the presence, of course, of knowledge and cultural institutions, triple helix, as Mr. Machia mentioned, that are some of the important preconditions for your economic growth and innovation. And although I firmly believe that an urban agenda should primarily be focused on cities, at the same time I've always stated that the success of our cities must not be at the expense of regional areas. In the Netherlands, like in many other European countries, we have areas where the population declines rapidly like it did in our cities a few decades ago. I believe that our city has the duty to act as a responsible capital city. I was with my colleague, uh, a minister in the Dutch government a few years ago, and I've seen that cities uh, who were helped in the 80s of the last century to become strong again, that they now are responsible for helping the rural areas and not act as cities for themselves alone. Amsterdam, for instance, has a cooperation with the three municipalities in the Netherlands with the most substantial population decline. This depopulation leads to all sorts of problems, but these municipalities lack capacity to cope. Knowledge exchange with a large municipality like Amsterdam, we have some 14,000 civil servants, can be very fruitful. Amsterdam civil servants have, for instance, assisted in application for EU funds and they offered workshops with regard to urban planning, vacancy, and city marketing. I've seen you have a workshop today on urban euro linkages. And the vice president of Metrics, who happens to be an Amsterdam civil servant as well, will certainly tell 
the participants a bit more about this cooperation that is fruitful for both of us. Another example of taking our responsibility is that Amsterdam took up the role of coordinator for the Urban Agenda Partnership on the inclusion of migrants and refugees. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to round up because I'm expected at the National Maritime Museum in a short notice, where I will, of course, thank the ministers uh, that they have put cities on the European agenda. And I will also tell them that the urban agenda can only be effective with the implementation focuses on the needs and concerns of our citizens. Citizens who, need, who needs like clean air, affordable housing, safety and social welfare, but who are at the same time the human capital that is the key factor in finding solutions for these problems. I wish you a fruitful forum at this day of the European city and I thank you for your attention.